Hey guys, welcome back to my garage and welcome back to part two of this 1964 Mercury Comet Cyclone build. Uh, today we're going to be getting into making that uh, clutch master cylinder bracket and getting it mounted. Um, but first, before we get stuck into that, there's something that I want to do just to clean up a bit around here. And that is uh, sealing the bottom of this engine up. Uh, we'll be taping off these ports and stuff. I want to get this engine sealed up because I don't want any airborne debris from angle grinding or anything else getting into this motor. And I want to be able to get it out of the way to begin with. So I did go ahead and get one of those Milladon sumps. Uh, they're not a sponsor, but they, this is exactly what I wanted for this motor. I want the, the look of this hanging out the bottom of this car, as I explained on the first video. Uh, so anyone interested... Uh, there's the part number for that sump so you know if you wanted something similar um yeah you can go ahead and order that uh what we'll have to do is clean up all this old gunk the sealer whatever was used to um seal up the original sump get it all cleaned up all the gasket material off uh and then we'll go ahead and and fit that fit that sump on there flip it over uh tape up the exhaust ports and then we'll get it out of the way and then we'll get cracking on that uh, bracket for the clutch master cylinder. Okay, that's all sealed up. Uh, now, a couple of bits of advice. If you've ever done gasket work on an engine and you haven't gone out and got yourself one of these yet, trust me, you really need to. It is still just a standard razor blade that's in the end of this thing. I Years and years and years I spent uh, just using a razor blade in my hands, but I'm telling you, this thing makes life so much easier to, to get a good like clean on the on the engine block get all those gaskets off so uh well worth going down and getting one of these now the way that i like to um put my gaskets together uh if you didn't pick up in the video um i always just quickly test fit the the gaskets make sure it is the right gaskets i've been stung before where holes haven't been right you know you just go put the pan on or valve cover or whatever it is and a hole won't line up or you've got it just around the wrong way or something like that so test fit it quickly make sure it is where it's supposed to be going and then i like to use on the sump uh, just some of this uh, former gasket it's it's a bit of a sticky liquid that doesn't really dry hard um, but it helps to seal up it also helps to stick the gasket still when you when you're putting things together and then go ahead and put every bolt in loose. Just a couple of threads each. Make sure you can get them all in. 
and make sure that you've got that gasket lined up. It hasn't fallen in or out of where it's supposed to be. Uh, and then just start cinching them down. Just don't go all the way hard. Just make sure they start going down in the middle. I like to work my way out on either side and um, then just keep going around until they're all tight. Uh, you'll need to re-tighten them once the engine's been run. Um, they generally do come loose. I'm sure there's torque specs and everything that's supposed to go on this, um, but you know what, hand tight, nice and tight is good enough. So just keep, I just keep checking them, you know, every now and then I'll just get underneath and make sure that they are tight and they haven't backed themselves out. So yeah, that's looking a, a little bit better. I know it's upside down. We'll get it flipped over now and uh, get a look at what it's gonna look like. But it should be the uh, the look that I want um, hanging out the bottom of the this car so you can see it coming down the road. I think it'll work out just right. All right, we got it back upright out of the way. That's exactly the look I was going for. Um, I reckon that'll look pretty sweet hanging out the bottom of the engine bay when it's going down the road. It's, Pretty much the look I want to go for. Um, so yeah, got it all cleaned up and um, put the rocker cover back on. Uh, we will be swapping these rocker covers out. We've got something in the pipe works um, that's going to be needed for this engine to fit uh, because we have a solid uh, flat tappet. We're going to be adjusting roller rockers every now and then. Uh, so we need so something that's going to come off and out out of the engine bay with those cross braces going from the, each tower. Uh, so yeah, instead of modifying the car, which I don't really want to do um, by cutting these out and making them bolt in or um, doing something else to them, I want to leave them. So yeah, we'll have to try and figure out how we can get those rocker covers off, which is coming up and then outwards to clear the, the rockers in the back. Um, so yeah, stay tuned and you'll see what I've got in, in mind for um, dealing with that issue. So anyway, let's get start stuck into getting this uh, bracket manufactured. All right, first what I think I might do is uh, just quickly snip out these hoses for the heater core. Um, they are actually just going through the firewall to a fitting with a hose clamp on them underneath. So they're actually fairly easy to get off plus They've already got a join in them, so we're gonna to have to replace these anyway. I just haven't bothered to uh, deal with them just yet. And I might pull out these engine mounts just to give us some more clearance because I'm gonna be standing in here to um, try and figure out what we're gonna do in this corner here. So. <laughs> got it up in the air uh, the old two poster makes life a little bit easier uh, I'm gonna pull this drag link off uh, just put it on when we uh, test fitted the engine just to make sure it was gonna clear the sump uh, and it looks at plenty of clearance so still waiting on some steering components for ball joints and things like that to come out of the States um, something very odd with the the ball joints on on this car the outside is uh, similar to a Falcon uh, or a Mustang, 
The inside is almost twice the diameter for some reason. Uh, it seems to be that it's just maybe a mercury thing. Uh, I don't know why they've gone two different styles of ball joints, almost almost twice the size on the inside for some reason, but of course they're buggered, so I am waiting for them to come out of the States. Um, so yeah, we'll, we'll just quickly get this off, get it out of the way, so we'll have heaps of clearance to get up in there in that top corner. Right, -o, so we'll get you in here for the plan of how we're gonna attack this. Now, the rod, the original rod, used to come out of this diaphragm just above this column here. Um, and it came down at pretty much the same uh, angle as what the column is. Uh, I'm pretty much gonna go with that same angle just because of the way the, um, you know, the pedal strokes is just slightly above where this is. And, and you gotta remember also too, we need to be able to clear the bottom of the, the brake master cylinder that's gonna be sitting up here. So uh, we're gonna be doing somewhat of an angle uh, for this master cylinder to be sitting here, but not so much of a problem that the fluid that's sitting in there is not gonna be able to fill up the cylinder that's there. So uh, a little bit of an angle, but it's, it's gonna be above anyway from the, the master cylinder. So, you know, that you can have this straight, you should have probably have this straight, but I'm gonna put it on a bit of an angle and um, just make sure that this fluid's gonna to be topped up right. So, um, yeah, so we're gonna probably place it uh, somewhere, somewhere around there-ish. We'll figure it out as we go along. And of course the uh, hydraulic outlet is on the opposite side and it's probably not gonna line up with this original hole. I'm not sure why that hole's actually there. Um, but yeah, we're gonna have to get a line fitted onto this um, as it goes in. So um, yeah, we'll start mocking up a bit of a template bracket to uh, bolt to this area here to actually mount this. Um, and then yeah, probably extend this um, push rod that goes into it. Now if I can get it open here, you'll see that it's, if I can get in the right light, you can see that it's um, circlipped in there. If you can see that, it's got a bit of a ball end on it. Now this, this rod's not gonna be long enough to um, sit where it needs to sit and go through up to the clutch pedal. Um, I've already done a quick measurement as to what it's gonna be. So we're gonna have to modify this which will probably be just extending this rod um, and possibly even using the original uh, end to, to mount to the clutch pedal itself. So anyway, we'll um, start making up a, a cardboard template to sort of mock up where we're gonna sit it and if it's gonna be in the right position and um, we'll go from there. All right, so I've cut this bit out already. Um, I'm just guessing at exactly what length we're gonna need. Um, and height and everything like that after all this is just a template just a bit of a mock-up to get an idea on how i want to make that bracket uh, for this clutch master cylinder so i'm i'm hoping i made it long enough i know that i need you know a couple of returns to bolt to the firewall and the inner guard liner um so yeah i just i use this um two two to three mil I'm not sure exactly um, piece of card. This is this stuff sort of getting harder to find in shops. I actually just um, got this from a trimmer. He carries this stuff all the time, so it's really good because it, when you fold it with a folder, it generally stays in the, in that position. Uh, any of that cardboard that you get, that corrugated cardboard from like your boxes, from getting your shipping and stuff like that, that stuff doesn't want to stay in in, the, in that sort of place. You need something that's pretty dense to uh, fold up and try and mock up and put it in place. So um, I'll show you in a, in a bit of a montage here how I, um, you know, we'll just put a hole in the middle and then we'll just start folding things and see how it goes. Gonna make mistakes, but that's why I do it in cardboard first rather than making it out of steel because you, you spend all that time cutting this up, folding it. It's not right, the folds aren't in the wrong spot. You know, sometimes you get lucky, but it's just easier and quicker to do it this way.
Now, that diameter is um, a little bit on the large side. It's um, unfortunately the only one that I've got close to that diameter that we're ch chasing. So I have to go get another one to actually do the, the final finish bracket that we're making. Uh, but for now, that at least gets me somewhere mounted up. The holes are just for reference. I'm not really going to sort of bolt anything to it. It's just to make sure that it is sitting, you know, where I want it. Um, so, yeah, we'll continue. We'll start to get some folds in these. We're only going to need a small platform for it to actually mount to. So uh, we know this side's actually going to go to the inner skirt. And this one is actually going to the firewall. So I can put a fold on this side and then just go in there and gauge how deep I want it across to, to make that fold. Make sure you do the folds on the right side because I was just about to make that mistake. As you can see, once you fold it, Generally, it'll keep its shape. It will break the cardboard. You can fold it right over to let it stay, but as you can see, it'll stay pretty much in that position as what you want. So that's what we're chasing. Righto, so far this is what I've come up with. So as you can see, it does like to hold its angles and then you can sort of manipulate those angles if it's um, not gonna be a complete right angle. Um, and it isn't on this car, we've got, we've got to clear a few things, so some of these angles will be, you know, under or over 90 degrees, so um, I'll get you in and we'll have a quick look at what's going on. I don't know if it's going to pick up too well on camera, but the, the hole that the um, shaft needs to go through is actually offset from the centre of the steering column, um, and we've got to contend with being able to bolt it, so we don't want to go too far this way. This is just a rubber diaphragm. And then we've got two angles here. One's pretty much vertical and then it goes back on a, like a 15 degree angle. So um, as I said, some of these will not be complete right angles. If I can hold it up in there. But we're starting to get some sort of shape together. So. I'll keep playing around with this for a little while and then I'll check back in with you and um, we'll see what progress we're going to get out of this. Righto, this is where we're at so far. So the beauty of cardboard, sticky tape sticks it to anything. So you, like, you know, if it was metal, you'd have to hold it there or, you know, try and weld it, tack weld it quickly or something like that. But as you can see, it's got, uh, you know, multiple different bends in it and uh, and we're gonna have to do a bend that's you can't really see it but it's across here to um, contend with mounting it to this uh, inner, inner fender so um, as I was thinking about it I'm probably gonna have to slot the top of this so that push rod can actually clear this if we have to pull that master cylinder out for any reason the shaft is that long going into the car that it's actually gonna come back and foul on the shock tower here. So we're gonna to have to um, have it so it actually can pull up through the top of that bracket. But I'm pretty happy with that. The length is perfect. So uh, I think it's time to transfer that to steel in some way. Something that's just occurred to me is that I did want to fold up some steel in this um, bench folder that I've got. 
uh, to make this bracket, but the pushing force that's going to be asserted onto this master cylinder is going to be too extreme for the steel that we can actually fold properly in this uh, bender here. That's um, it only really does good up to about two mil. After that, it's sort of you got to put too much force on it, and it just almost puts a radius on the on the bend. So. I've got some of this stuff that's lying around, um, as you can probably see in the corner in, in prior clips that there's actually scrap sitting around everywhere, but uh, I've got a sheet of this stuff which is uh, much thicker, we've got three, three mil stuff. Um, this stuff's not going to flex with the force of your you know, your foot pushing into it. It will a little bit, but not as much as what the two mil bracket would have done. I reckon there would have been uh, way too much flex on that. And you do not want any deflection in that firewall as you're pushing that clutch down. So I'm gonna cut these pieces, these individual pieces that are in between the bends um, out of this steel. And then we're just gonna weld it together. Um, so yeah, it's gonna be a lot more stronger. Is cut to weld together. Uh, I'll probably go ahead and drill these holes in this piece first just to make it easier uh, before it's all welded together and hard to, to hold. Uh, we also have to try and get that small return bend done in the in this in this bracket here which being that this is a small piece we can really just use the the, the folder here to try and get that. So we'll just do it slowly um, and go test fit it on the car, just bend it a little bit, go test fit it until we get the right bend that we want in it. Now that also will deflect away from uh, where it's got to be connected up here. Um, so I'll end up just putting a small filler piece in there because I'm not sure what that bend's going to be just yet. So uh, we'll get that bend done on this to suit the, the inner skirt uh, and then that way we'll know what piece we need to cut for in here. If it's not too big, we can always use the glue stick to just fill that that big gap up. You know, generally it's it's probably, I don't know, it's probably about 10 mil wide. So we might have to put a bit of a filler piece in there to, to weld in, but yeah, we'll go ahead and, and get these holes done, bend this up, and then hopefully we can start welding all this together. Uh, so I'll tack weld it first. The tack welds, you know, we'll sort of mock up in the right angle that we want, but tack welds are generally easy to sort of manipulate and bend it a little bit more, a little bit less, until we get the right shape and then we can fully weld it. So we'll go ahead and get all that done. And then See what I mean 
about putting that bend in that bracket to um, meet this bend that's on the inner skirt. So uh, I don't know if that was pure luck, but that was my first bend that I made. So we're pretty close there. I'm pretty happy with that. So um, hopefully it's in the right position. You know, I might have stuffed up where it actually needs to be bent if the bracket needs to be higher or lower. But we'll just tack this bit on. Uh, if it works out, it works out. If not, we'll just make a new bit. But um, yeah, let's go ahead and start tacking things together and see if that bracket will fit where we want it. This is what I mean about tack welding. <coughs> I didn't uh, take into consideration that that wasn't going to be flat like that, was it? It's going to be up on an angle. So I've actually bent that in the wrong wrong way. So we're going to have to redo that. Hopefully I can just get that straight and then rebend it across there. So we can just break off the two welds that are holding that bit on. And uh, we'll get a bit of angle on where that's supposed to be. Righto, so going fairly well. Uh, but at this stage, just looking at the clearance that we have for the brake master cylinder, and I've remembered that we're uh, running the proportioning valve on the bottom. So that's not gonna work too well. Uh, that, that's obviously gonna hit if we push it in any further. So. Uh, we're going to have to decide whether we're going to uh, cut this bracket down in a 90 degree angle so it clears what it, you know, the proportioning valve underneath that brake master cylinder. I think that's going to be the way to go. I want to try and keep as much material down here as possible, but it would have been nice to maybe just make that uh, go straight across to here, but same here starts having all sort of weird bends going on down here. So I sort of wanted that that flat area to mount the bracket to. So uh, I think what we might do is just cut into this and um, make clearance for that brake master cylinder and um, yeah, reconvene then and actually probably scallop a bit of this out for the clearance for that column. Righto, got that cut. On the top there, uh, I'll test fit it in a minute, make sure we do have enough clearance there. But I'm pretty happy with that. We've got the clearance over the column. Um, so we'll be able to get two bolts, two pretty large bolts in there and, and three going up there. So, I mean, just keeping in mind that the force is going this way. So this, this side will probably be the more important um, bolting uh, side. You know, we don't need all that material up there. It's, it's only pulling on the firewall here. So it would have been nice to have more of a footprint on there, but um, I reckon this will do just well. So uh, if we end up finding that it does have a bit of flex in there, I can always sort of weld another tab off there and come over to the, you know, the, the tower or, you know, somewhere else. I mean, I'm sure there's some way of bracing it sort of internally or something like that, but I'm pretty confident it's gonna be the, the way to go. So uh, I'm gonna finish weld all this, um, test fit that first, obviously, so we're not still running into the issues and um, try and get it all mounted up. see it has evolved a little bit from what we did with the cardboard um, but as I mentioned it's it's always going to evolve you're going to swap a few things change a few things test it out again but at least that gives you some idea of where you got to go with it um, I know some people would have made it a little bit different than this they would have had their own opinions everyone's got their own way of doing things um, this is how I'm going to do it and um, yeah I hope you got something out of you know, being able to use a bit of cardboard like that, it, it really does help with whatever you're going to do in trying to um, make something fit. It makes life a lot easier. You know, it's a lot lighter to stick up underneath something, you know, uh, sticky tape it to the thing. 
you know, whatever you're gonna fabricate, it's a lot easier doing it this way. So there you go, guys. That's the uh, finished result. Got it all painted up, bolted up. There's still a couple of bolts I still gotta get in here. Um, you know, in a minute, I'll um, pull this back off and finish putting those bolts on. It's kind of hard by yourself being on both sides, but um, got most of the bolts done. The beauty of getting these ones up nice and tight. So we're still dealing with that hole that's in the in the uh, trans tunnel, so I can you know reach around and sort of tighten them up that way. So you know we got plenty of clearance for that. Um, just the uh, portioning valve um, on top of that bracket and this bracket it's probably once it's been bolted up it's probably overkill to be honest um in how thick it is and everything like that but that's good it means no deflection means it won't twist and turn and carry on so um that'll be a good thing and and where i'll fill it up is um still above where the cylinder is so as long as we keep this completely topped up we should uh, never have an issue with um filling this cylinder up with fluid um, so yeah, it's easy accessible from the top. You can see it easily. So, uh, overall great result. I think anyway, um, I've cut a hole in the backside for, um, uh, the port. Unfortunately, the, the, um, line going out is going straight into that wall, but you know, we can, we can just run that line on the outside and, and then straight in. So yeah, we'll just, um, I'll continue further. We'll get some lines done, things like that. Um, whether we do that right now, um, I might actually, because I'm going to have to be pulling in and out of this engine so many times because we, as I said, we still have to finish fabricating this trans tunnel. Um, I need the location of where the shift is going to be coming through. Um, so <clears throat> for the time being, I'll probably test fit the engine and then we'll move on to other fabrication parts um, and then come back around to this and run lines to and from this stuff. But yeah so there you go all right guys well i hope you got something out of that um you know that's the way i do it with the cardboard um that's the way i've sort of always done it with sort of sheet metal bracketry that i've needed to do so um i hope you you know you can use that in in the projects that you're doing and um yeah look i i don't i'm not a fabricator i'm, I'm not claiming to be a fabricator um i'm just a bloke doing a uh, building a car in the shed so I hope you guys are doing the same, you know. I, I just want to get this car going and on the road. I'm not looking to make some perfect millimetre, you know, millimetre perfect style bracketry or some billet stuff to bolt onto it. It's, this isn't a show machine, it's a go machine. So, um, yeah, oh, look, I hope you enjoyed it. In the next episode, I think we'll be jumping in, um, sort of crossing backwards and forwards. It's unfortunately it's what I, I normally do um, off camera anyway. So... I think I want to sort of mock that engine back up with the transmission and probably jump into maybe getting that floor fabricated um, to, um, you know, get that shifter point through the floor uh, location. And then we can, you know, do other things like, you know, start to put interior back into it and things like that. Um, but at the same time, we're going to have another look at what, what's going on uh, and what we need to do with building those pipes. Um, so... You know, the, the motor's going to come in and out a few times in this build. Um, uh, so, yeah, I think on the next episode, that's exactly what we'll do is we'll just get it mocked up a bit and and uh, take another look at what needs to be done to get those pipes in uh, in and out of that engine bay. So I'll, I'll see you on the next episode.